The Business Coach, proudly brought to you by Standard Bank. Let's talk business. This is how we're moving your business forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. My name is Michelle van Blaerk. I'm 25 years old and I live in London. Michelle owns the Perfect Cup, which is renowned for its pancakes and the fresh coffee that is roasted on the premises. I grew up with coffee and my parents always drink coffee. It's just delicious. Coffee's just delicious. <laughs> After managing the store for a few years, Michelle bought the perfect cup with money she borrowed from her parents. I'm Kuni van Black, I'm Michelle's dad. Now I'm the friendly banker. Family is very important to me. They're like my support system. I've got two older brothers. I'm the little baby sister. But as a youngster, it's very, very difficult to start your own business. I was very happy when Michelle said she wanted to buy the business, because if that didn't happen, she would have gone to France. And I was not happy with that. Despite all the support from her parents, the Perfect Cup is in trouble and has not made a profit for some time. The only experience I've got is from when I managed the shop. That's all I know. It does frustrate me that I don't know exactly what to do all the time. Because the business coach has so much experience, anything that he shows me, I could benefit from it. I don't want the business to fail because other people's lives are at stake and it's not just three people, it's all their families um, that also get affected and I don't want to be responsible for a mum that can't provide for her, her children. The business coach is bringing his years of experience to help Michelle. I'm on my way to meet Michelle who runs a little coffee shop in Parkview called The Perfect Cup. From what I understand, she's fairly young so I'm assuming that her challenge is profitability, growing her business and business skills. I must say positioning isn't bad. It is in a quiet section right down in the corner. Just a couple of pointers that concern me a bit. One is there's a whole host of items out here for sale, uh, home decor elements. On the other side there's some cakes and some muffins. It makes me question really what it is that Michelle is trying to create, what the whole essence of this coffee shop is about. Michelle, Hi. good, good to meet you. Yeah, you. Oh, you too. <laughs> Is there a place we can have a chat? Yeah, sure, we can go to the back over there by the coffee. Lovely. What I'm really keen to do is for you to take me through your coffee beans here. And tell me a little bit about them, right. if you don't mind. No problem at all. Michelle takes Greg through the various coffee blends that the Perfect Cup stocks. I've heard from one of your patrons here earlier yeah. that you guys make the best pancakes. We do. <laughs> can I try one? Of course. Mina, can you please ask Susie to make a pancake for Greg? Tell me a little bit about your roastery. It used to be a San Francisco's coffee roastery and then it was a Galaxy coffee roastery. So the roaster that's here is actually the original roaster that came from America and everything is exactly the same. But that is the one part of the business that I'm sort of working towards expanding. Mm -hmm. And because like the shop itself, I'm scared if I do it too big, then it, it'll lose a lot of the personal touch. If I expand the roastery part of it, I can still reach a lot of people, but I can still have a close relationship with the people that come here. Now who runs the machine? <laughs> Me. Anybody else in your team who can do that? No. Okay, is it, a, is it a complex process? You do have to have everything sort of perfect. You have to have the right amount of coffee and you have to make, like, stand there the whole time and make sure that the beans don't drop or go too quickly. And... Greg suspects that Michelle has trouble delegating to her staff and will return to this issue later. What percentage of your income is made up from the roastery? So I can't give you like exact amount, like an exact percentage. I can go look it up for you and tell you. Sort of gut feel. It's definitely the majority. So the coffee shop itself is really secondary? Exactly. On average, how full is the coffee shop on a daily basis? 
Winter is normally quite good for us, so June, July and August, we're usually like constantly full. You've got this huge display cabinet mm. and a lot of trinkety coffee cups and yeah. so on. We moved a lot of small trinkety things out a little bit and then I wanted to move the shop more in a coffee direction. Has the turnover dropped since you've changed it? It feels like it's gotten more. It feels like it's gotten more. It's comforting. <laughs> I look at these numbers a bit better. I think, well, maybe. Uh, this is why you're here, <laughs> to help me with these things. You've got to have your numbers. You've got to know your numbers, otherwise okay. your business is not going to survive. So we'll need to have a look at that and see where the exactly. profit actually comes for you. Yeah. I'm making a beeline for this, <laughs> for this pancake yeah. for you. Let's give this a shot. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to say, I'm, I'm very impressed. Thank you. It's very really homely, but the, the coffee you. shop is, is lovely, really Thank it is. Uh, but I think what's important, though, is that we look at those numbers. Yeah. Where are your numbers at the moment? They're at home. At your house? Yeah. Let's head off to your home and have a look. It's a very homely coffee shop, and uh, looking at the individuals who are coming here, it's almost like they're coming here to escape. It's a really nice little coffee shop. All right, how did you start the business in the first place and, and, and how did you fund it? My dad helped me with like, the big amount that we had to pay Deirdre. What is your current loan? Still about 280 something. So there's a fair amount of money that you still owe your parents. Yeah, exactly. And are you paying that back on a monthly basis? <laughs> I try. Um, my dad is also like really nice. So, and if I can't, then he's awesome enough to say, well, don't worry about it. We have to understand where you where you sit in terms of, I'm going to call it guilt. If something does happen to you in the business, what the impact is on you and your family. Yeah. In terms of your profitability at this point, where do you sit? I am making a loss because I still have like a big debt amount that I have to pay back. Well, the important thing for us at the moment is looking at that break-even point, mm -hmm. understanding what it is is break-even for you, yeah. and then putting a plan on the table to get you to that next level so you can start working on that dream of yours. Yeah. Tell me about your dream for the perfect cup. So long-term goal is to expand the, the coffee roastery. That way I'd also be able to reach a lot more people because I'd be able to supply a lot more people. Where do you see me helping you? You can help me with absolutely every single part of, of running a business. It sounds like to me yeah. you've got a, a, a serious lack of systems. Yeah. It's about having those controls and measures that everything is in its little place. Yeah. Greg wants to deal with the fact that Michelle finds it difficult to delegate to her team. It's difficult for me to give other people a bit more responsibility so that I don't always have to be there. So that I can go to the bank and get change. Who gets the change for you? My dad. He's awesome. <laughs> He's really awesome. Let's have a look at those numbers. Cool. Let's have a quick look through them. As Michelle has no clear idea of how the business is doing, Greg takes a look at her financial statements. There's definitely something strange here, because you can't have, a, yeah. have an 18% gross profit in January, yeah. and a 56 in December, and a 47 in yeah. November. Mm -hmm. Having a look at these numbers, that some of them don't make sense, mm -hmm. and you've got some huge irregularities here yeah. that are popping up. Okay. You need to get a handle on this. Yeah, but I'm only 25, I'm allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a game. You can play coffee shop, coffee shop, but when it comes down to the crux, you're actually yeah. a business owner. And there's certain things that you have to do mm -hmm. if you want to survive. You're in the big world. And the day that you make that decision is the day that you're really going to move yourself forward. Greg travels back to his office to identify the areas Michelle needs to focus on in order to improve her business. My plan for Michelle is going to cover two areas of her business. On the one side, we need to focus heavily on the coffee bean sales, and on the other side, we need to focus on the coffee shop itself. And sadly, in between all that, we've got to focus heavily on getting the right systems and processes in place. I have set her a task to go back and understand more about the numbers so we can break them down to determine exactly what we need to focus on. Michelle van Blaerk owns the Perfect Cup, a coffee shop and roastery in Parkview. 
She is heavily indebted to her parents and at the moment the business is not making a profit. Last night I went through all the, the things that he asked me to do. He said I needed to compare Apple and May and break it down into how much coffee I've sold, how many things I sold in the like food and drinks and how many gifts. So I was busy with that. What I saw was not what I thought because I actually thought that the beans brought in more money than the coffee shop itself. And I saw that it was and so it was a big surprise. <laughs> Today I'm excited to see what systems I can put in place to make everything a bit more successful. Greg has returned to the perfect cup to take Michelle through his plans for her business. The homework you took away last night, how did yeah. that go? I always thought that the coffee bean business makes a lot more than the, the coffee shop itself. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at this, I saw that it doesn't. The homework that Michelle did last night was obviously a very powerful exercise. She now understands where her money's coming from. So this showed me that the coffee shop itself makes a lot more than I thought it did. Now, yesterday we spoke about your vision. How yeah. does this kind of impact your vision? I still think if I had to expand the coffee shop more, I'm scared that it would affect the personal touch that I have. Do you think you need to charge more? I should actually be charging more. And then I put the prices up with two rand. They're like, how can you put the prices up again? And I'm like, gosh, do you know what coffee costs? At the end of the day, your parents are funding this food. Your need to make people happy, yeah. what do you think that's costing your parents every month? Uh, probably too much. Because <laughs> it means that I'm not paying them back what I should be paying them back. You have to address these belief systems that you've got about money. Yeah. And you've got to start behaving as a business owner. You're not a hostess, but you run the business. So that's the first part of the plan that we need to work on. Mm -hmm. The second part of the plan involves looking at your stock. I see on the display cabinet here, you've got a whole host of items. Have you paid for those items? Yes. You need to see how we can get stock on consignment. On the other side of the coin, we also need to have a look at whether it's worthwhile you importing your own beans. Yeah. If you can import your own beans, once again, you're reducing your cost. Well, one of the things that's a problem with that, space in general for me is a big issue. I realize space is limited, so it might be worth a while getting somebody in to come have a look at the kitchen. Okay. The third part of the plan that we need to address is the systems. You have a severe lack of systems. And then lastly, from a marketing perspective, we really need to get you out there promoting yourself just yeah, to get exactly. people to, to be attracted to yeah. where you're at. So today, the first exercise, I'm going to take you to someone and chat to you about import and export. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Right. So if you can grab your bag, we'll okay. be on our way. Cool. <laughs> Michelle, I brought you here today to meet Joe and Elizabeth from eCoffee. They are a company that imports and distributes uh, coffee from Ethiopia. Oh, cool. And the real reason is so you can have a chat to them about the implications of potentially importing your own coffee and looking at increasing your roastery. Okay, cool. Well, firstly, thank you so much for your time. From an importing perspective, um, how often do you import your own goods? When I started 10 years ago, I only imported and I'm putting less and less and less. Because we have found it was extremely cost incurring for a small business. It just doesn't work. There are just too many risks. What are you going to do if somebody doesn't send you the coffee that you paid for? If you were a big roaster, maybe you could justify buying directly from source. Because as a small roaster, you can't buy container loads of coffee. A container has 18 tons of green coffee beans. You know how long it will take you to roast 18 tons of coffee. So you can speak to your broker and see if they can bring you some coffee in in one of their containers, say some exotic Peruvian coffee or something like that, or Costa Rican coffee. So you can do that. I think if I was to start a business again, I think maybe I would just do blends because there you can create something which is uniquely yours and you can give it a name which somebody can't just yeah. copy. What is important about coffee is doing it right and consistently right, there's no real secrets. A lot of information there for you, what you should be doing in terms of consistency, looking at the blending, mm -hmm. and uh, possibly going that direction. Importing your own, well, maybe a little bit of work still required yeah. from that side. Hearing about how much it actually does cost to import, um, it does make me think of it. Michelle has a way to go before she can consider importing her own beans. For now, she needs to focus on the coffee shop. 
I've organized for a friend of mine, Marius, who works at the International Hotel School, to come have a chat to you. And hopefully he can give you some tips and techniques on what you can do right. to really manage your stock more efficiently. All right. Okay, let's go wait for him inside. Yes, how's it? Good to see you again. You too. <laughs> What we're looking at is some ideas and tips on stock management. Certainly. All right. Right, Michelle, you will hear that I mentioned control points. These are certain key points in your um, operation where you actually need to apply control to make sure that you don't lose money at the end of the day. How do you know what to purchase and how much to purchase. That is where your standardized recipes need to come in. The first control point really starts with your menu planning, with your standardized recipes that you are going to write up, and then you're going to either buy the items yourself or you're going to source a supplier that buy it for you. From the moment you've received something, it needs to go into storage as quickly as possible because items lying around, sitting around, can go missing, it can start spoiling. Secure your storage areas. Because how do you control what's coming out and what's coming in? You will look at your standardized recipe and say, right, I only want to bake 10 pancakes. So how much flour, how many eggs, how much milk do I need to issue? And you're only going to release that from your storage area. And you know, from those items that I've released, I will get 20 pancakes. Okay, I have one person who is qualified to issue the items. Because if anyone can just go into your storage areas and take whatever they want, there's no control over that. Whatever you issue from your storage areas, you need to write down. That will give you your consumption for the week. And that will tell you if there's a variance between what you've actually issued and what your books say you should have used. Marius takes a look around the shop to give Michelle some practical advice on how to manage her stock better. So this is where we keep back most of the dry ingredients. Okay. What have we got missing there? <laughs> <laughs> Here we've got a lock that isn't being used, so secure your stock. Okay. Now, if we open it up, what we've got here is a lack of stock rotation. The D bag, D box, date all your items. Keep everything that belongs together together. Keep your storage areas clean as well, because hygiene makes sure that you don't get pests. So it can really just be tidied up a bit and put some dates on, and it makes your stock take so much easier. All right. Implement those control points and you'll see you'll be A for away. Thank you very much. Okay. And thanks for taking the time to come and help. You're most welcome. I've learned from the business coach that you might think that you know something about your business, but you don't. <laughs> the business coach has organized for multi-award winning chef Arnold Tanza to come and review Michelle's kitchen setup. I only found out recently that Arnold was a regular. Yeah, uh, this is where I buy my coffee. Uh, Michelle does awesome roasting and fantastic coffee, so I love it, yeah. Your first observations? The first thing I, I'd say is, we need to get rid of a whole lot of things that are over here. Okay. okay. What's yeah. not needed must go. So I can guarantee you, if you come here Saturday mornings, there's not enough space for pots and pans. We've got to work out a system that, that it flows a little bit. I can create a lot more space by putting things that your um, ovens, put it up against the wall, you've got more work service. Kitchens generally tend to be quite small and hidden. You've got an open kitchen, so you need to be a lot more aware of what happens in here is what your customer can see. Like those chemicals, if I stand there, I can see them, all right? Move them out of sight. This is the food area, you understand what I'm saying? It's not major changes, but you've got to be disciplined about it and you've got to get your crew to do it. Okay. All right. When you're looking in as a customer, what are you seeing? Right, you want to see something that's clean, that's neat. I've seen tons worse, so don't <laughs> take it the, the bad way. I'm just saying we've got, to, we've got to kind of clean it, we've got to kind of put a structure into it. All right. But sometimes you walk in and you're not quite sure, am I walking into an art gallery, am I walking into a deli, am I walking into a roastery? You're known for your coffee, so we've got to kind of form that identity. For you. If you, you have lovely ladies, but we need to give them an identity too. We need to get them some kind of uniform. That's what customers want to see. It's a lot to take in, yeah. but you're right, it'll help a lot. There's a common theme running through today. She needs to start letting her team run the shop, and she also needs to start decluttering her whole kitchen environment here. She needs to take action. Um, I want to set you a couple of tasks okay. before I leave. The first one you're already working on, which is the numbers, mm -hmm. and we need to have a stock take sooner than later. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is have a look at operational procedures and systems that you can implement into your business. I need you to get out there and actually market your coffee beans okay. and market your coffee shop. And then lastly, I want you to take cognizance of what Arnold said 
declutter. Declutter. <laughs> I, I take cognizance of some of his comments regarding the decor and just come up with some ideas. Sure, no problem. All right. Because I'm here all the time, I see things in a certain way. With new eyes coming in and saying, this is how I'm perceiving this. It's good because it makes me reevaluate the situation and sort of look at it with new eyes as well. The business coach has been helping Michelle turn her business around. She's already received advice on reorganizing her workspace and the importance of putting systems in place. Greg suggested that I get out there a little bit more and market myself. So I'm off to an agency called Agent Orange to see if they maybe would look at me supplying them with some coffee. Hello, I'm Brandon. I'm <laughs> Michelle. Nice, nice to meet you. Have a seat. All right, so I wanted to find out from you if you guys use any coffee at the moment. We do. What coffee is it? We use a whole variety because we all have our favorite coffees as well. Okay, um, I did bring a few samples if all I right. can maybe just Let's show see. you. This is what a normal packet would look like if we do it for you in filter. So it's a 65 gram packet. Okay. And it'll be exactly the same amount every time. And then I brought you some plunger coffees and then some beans. Getting the beans, is that better than getting it in the... It, it is better because as soon as you grind the beans, it does start to lose its flavor. So the best way is to then grind it as you need it. Because if you think about it, if you go buy ground coffee, those coffees have been roasted about nine months ago, packaged, kept in warehouses, it would have tasted a lot nicer nine months ago. But if you do like decide to get from us, you'll know that if you place an order, we I, I roast it fresh for you guys. Okay. And how much does this all cost? Well, it's 180 rand a kilogram, but if you do buy a bigger amount, we are able to give you a wholesale price as well. Okay. And you do deliveries? I'll deliver. Okay. <laughs> yes. We'll try your coffee, see what it's like. Yeah, well, that's why I brought them. Well, thank you very much for your time. No, thank you. I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a good day. <laughs> right, so I am at Ginnagop Guest House in Malville, and I want to go inside and see if they might be interested in buying some coffee from us. We are a coffee roastery, and we get beans from seven different countries all around the world. I roast the beans fresh every morning. So I need to find out from you um, if you use a lot of coffee and what kind of coffee you use. We have a filter machine in the dining room yes. um, and we serve coffee with breakfast. Because we have so many people here with different tastes, we basically need something, a sort of a mild, medium roasted coffee and something that's not flavored. We are also thinking of um, putting plungers in our rooms. We have 10 rooms. Yeah. So for that, we'll also need smaller packets mm -hmm. for a small plunger. Okay. Things are going well for Michelle, and she seems to have secured a new customer. What I'll do is I'll go get smaller packets for you, because you would actually use a lot less. You'll pack it into packets mm -hmm. that suit you. So if you've got a specific need, we can make sure that we meet that need for you. Okay. I'm going to come back uh, to you with an order. A nice coffee in the guest house. I think it's it's a good thing to do. That. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a pleasure. I look forward to try these coffees. I'm a big coffee drinker. Thank you very much. Well, I hope okay. you like it. You Have very a lovely much. day. Michelle has arrived at Franchise Plus for some advice on better ways to manage her business. I'm here to see Anita. Let's go through. Sure. Thank you very much. Hi Michelle, nice to meet you. you. So you've got a growing coffee business. Yes. And what are you currently doing about marketing? I think it's important for you to get out there. Um, yeah. Do you have time to get out there? I don't really, because I'm, I'm at the shop every day. You see, that is a bit of a problem if you want to scale the business and grow it. And we find this with a lot of small businesses. The owner is very passionate about yeah. it and therefore very much hands-on and operationally involved. Yeah. And the challenge is 
to have the ability to systemize yeah. so that you can let go to a certain extent so that you can focus on growing the business because if you ever get to a point where you're going to expand to extra branches or franchises then you will have to free yourself up anyway yeah. because then those branches would need your assistance exactly so you just need to systemize as much as possible in the business especially because who knows one day you might be in a position where you've grown your sales you've got enough capital you want to maybe open a second store maybe franchise it one day yeah. and and in order to be able to do that, you do need to standardize as yeah. much as possible. Um, and it can't all come down yeah, on you. Yeah, exactly, because you know? I can't do everything. You know, you must also make sure that there's a very efficient procedure for you to do your daily cash up and your banking. You have to monitor your gross profit percentage almost on a daily basis. Okay. And from our experience working with clients in the restaurant and fast food industry, you should be achieving between 58 to 60% um, gross profit. Okay. If you're not, there's either shrinkage or wastage and you need to monitor it very closely to see what is going on. Okay. So that's the first um, ratio that you have to look at very, very carefully. Ideally, your rent mm -hmm. should be 10% of sales okay. and then your labor should be 18% of sales okay. in that region. So. You know, if it's too much, you need to have a look at those sort of things. Okay. For a business like mine, do you think it would be a good idea to maybe expand either with regards to the coffee beans or the restaurant itself? It depends on how you do it because right. um, it could be capital intensive. For example, for you to open another branch, mm -hmm. you would need to put capital in there. Yeah. So you know what your financial situation is. Yeah. I think the important thing is that you basically have a clean sheet of paper now. Yeah. So the important thing is to try and get everything as near to perfect as possible before you even think about expanding. All right. I'm definitely going to have to focus on the operational things and I know that it's all about discipline and things but I'm scared of failing in that sense. I don't want to disappoint Greg and, and Marius and Anita and them, everyone that like said you know, it will, you know just do this, do this, it's easy and they know that it works and I'm scared that we're not able to do it. In the weeks since the business coach has helped Michelle, she has been working hard on improving her business. One of her goals is to increase her sales of fresh coffee. Michelle has set up a meeting with Petro Foods. She hopes to find a way to import green coffee beans in volumes that she can afford. So I'm here at Petro Foods. I'm going to come speak to Vilma to see if they can help me with the importing of green beans. Thank you very much for taking the time to see me to help me explore maybe importing beans for the coffee shop. You guys obviously import a lot of things from all over the world. If I wanted to bring in some coffee beans from, like, say, Brazil, and how much would I have to do at a time? Well, we would keep three months stock level for you. Because we deal with so many different products in such large volumes, we are able to offer it very competitively. What I suggest for us to start on is for me to contact some of my suppliers yeah. and get them to start sending us some samples. I have a few here that you can take with you yeah. and once they have sent some samples you can have a look at it and let us know which ones you're interested in. All right. Yeah, I'm having a coffee tasting event at our shop tonight. If you maybe wanted to come and join us and then maybe have a look at any of the other things that you might think I would, I would be able to use. I'd love to be there. It's a win-win situation. Michelle is able to import beans in smaller, more affordable volumes. Michelle goes to her bank to get advice on ways to reduce her bank charges. Take a seat. One of the things that I've noticed is that my bank charges does take up quite a lot of my expenses. So I wanted to find out if we can find a way to maybe bring it down a little bit. 
when you're paying your suppliers or you're paying your staff, you should consider doing electronic funds transfer instead of a withdrawal, as an example. Consider making frequent deposits, but obviously you have to take into account the benefits and the cost of making a deposit. Let's say you do one or two yes. a week. It may not be that expensive for you to go on a pay-as-you-go pricing package. On a pay-as-you-go package, you will pay a per transaction fee. So if yeah. you've got a hundred bucks that you're depositing on a daily basis, it could become too expensive for you to do that. Yeah. So you have to strike a balance as you grow your business. Let us look at your charges yeah. from the banking perspective and let's look at an option that is ideal for a business. Given the nature of your business, you are always at your premises. There's no time for you to walk out and run into the bank. So you can leave the bank Banking business to us, you can call your business banker and your business banker can come and see you and guide you in selecting the best pricing option for a business. Thank you very much, Glenn, for your time and for your help. I appreciate it. It has given me a lot of clarity of what I what I should be doing. So Great, it was good you meeting you. I just finished my meeting with Glenn. It went very well. There's some things that I just have to phone my business banker about. So now I'm just going off to the shop to go prepare for the coffee tasting tonight. It's been two weeks since Greg last saw Michelle. He has returned to the perfect cup to find out how she's progressing with the tasks that he left her. So tell me, what's it been like since last time I was here? Take me through mm -hmm. what you've implemented from a stock perspective. All right, so I've put locks on three of the cupboards just to make it a little bit easier and a bit more manageable. Have you yeah. taken all the items out of the packaging? Not all of them. It's easier for me to see if there's six packets than, you know, if they're loose, they sort of move around. So as soon as we break a packet, we take it out completely, but then the little groups stay the same. It, it's helping a lot with regards to making sure where everything goes and keeping control of what gets used. And okay. But in the morning you have a stock take. Yeah. And in the evening you have a stock take. Yeah. And then you go through your till slip and you then work out these items we've given to customers. Therefore, if there's a, a gap, yeah. there's shrinkage and or there was wastage. Yeah. Have you picked up any any problems from that side? The first week that we did it, there was some discrepancies. They would be measuring with like per scoops, but some scoops would be a lot bigger than others. But now that you've got the control in press, it's not, it seems yeah. to be running quite... Because it's difficult to waste if everything is exactly in the right amount. Let's have a look at your financials. All right. But specifically, we had some challenges with April and May because we couldn't work out whether they were positive or negative. Yeah, it's exactly. And the stock. Yeah. If you look at the business as a whole, mm -hmm. um, here's some financials about how it's improved this year. Greg is pleased to see a comprehensive financial statement which shows a better picture than he anticipated. So you're on the upward trend, which is a, a yes. positive place to be. Are you slowly getting to grips with the power of numbers? Yeah, I'm feeling a lot more positive just seeing the numbers as well. What is also positive is that your GP is, is much higher here. You're nearly at the break-even point. So part of your planning going forward now is to budget for profit. Okay. One of the areas we did speak about was your pricing, because that might be the differentiator between break-even and where you are now. Have you gone out there and looked at what the other coffee shops are charging? Some of my competitors, it's 90 Rand a packet that I charge 45 Rand for. Okay. So, so how much have you pushed your... I haven't yet. I would never be able to live with myself. I wouldn't be able to justify it. Now we're back to your limiting beliefs again. <laughs> if you offer value, people will pay for it. I like that option. I just don't want to be like charging 90 Rand a packet of coffee if I could actually be fine with like 55 Rand. Okay, well that's fine. I that's still 20% above what you're currently yeah. charging. So and you can charge a slight premium and make some profit. Tell me about your marketing. What have you been up to there? So I'm having a coffee tasting evening tonight and I'm also working on some signage for outside. Okay, good. For the decluttering exercise, how's that going? I need to find that balance between what gets displayed and what gets put in the boxes, but it's difficult because I don't have enough space. For me, it's a little bit like Everest yeah. that you're climbing. <laughs> yeah. But what is positive, though, is that you are getting there. If you break down your sales mm -hmm. into meals, coffees, souvenirs, you can see what is selling. So if you could do that for me, for well, the next time I come around, that'll be great. Then uh, we can put a proper plan together to actually roll everything out into your shop. All right. well, thank you very much, Greg. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. So... Michelle's trying really hard. She is a young business owner, and I'm very impressed with what she's doing. She still has, unfortunately, a long way to go.
Michelle is getting her shop ready for a coffee tasting event, which she hopes will give her business new exposure. Greg gives Michelle a hand as she prepares for the big event. Michelle's family and friends are all here today to help her out. She's really lucky to have such a great support structure. We're going to get started in a few minutes, so if you just want to have a seat and then, yeah, we'll get started soon. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you guys all taking the time out to spend the evening with me for my first coffee tasting. So if you have a coffee, what you want is you want to have a well-balanced taste. So you don't want a coffee that is too bitter or too acidic or, you know, too sweet for that matter. You want a well-balanced coffee. This is Chris, he is from Illy, he's helping me out a lot, him and his son Michael Angelo. Thanks so much for coming through. Michael Angelo is going to quickly explain to you how a tasting chart works um, and then we'll get into the tasting part. What you want to do when, you, when you're drinking a coffee is you want to find the coffee that best suits you and suits your palate. And as Michelle said, you want a well-balanced coffee. It's where it's not too bitter, it's not too acidic, it doesn't pull in your mouth, you don't have a, a bitter aftertaste and it's got a nice sweetness to it and a thick body that you enjoy. That's pretty much the perfect coffee. We've had a wonderful evening so far and I'm looking forward to many more cups of coffee with Michelle. There's a lot about coffee that I'm not aware of at all. As you grow and you learn into it, it becomes quite fun to actually realize what you don't know. It was a really fun evening and I really enjoyed learning more about coffee. Michelle's in her element. She really enjoys the whole entertainment side and it looks like everybody here is having fun. So that's really what it's about. The most important thing that I want everyone to understand about coffee is that, as you've now experienced, the most important thing is just for you to enjoy it with friends and family and loved ones. Um, and if you do that, it makes any good cup of coffee the perfect cup of coffee. The business coach has been helping Michelle van Blerk, the young owner of The Perfect Cup. Today, she's hosting a relaunch of the coffee shop. For me, the most challenging part was exposing myself as much as I have. It's been very challenging, a bit more vulnerable than I would have liked. <laughs> yeah. There have been challenges, but I've at least tried everything that he's asked me. In general, it has been working. The stock control falls in quite easily with my daily routine anyway. It's more the marketing that's been a challenge. It's not been as successful as I would have liked, but it, we're getting there. Um, and I've got some signage and we've done some like painting and reshuffled around the kitchen a little bit to sort of declutter. Just preparing and making sure everything is ready for the, the relaunch of the shop. It's been a while since I've seen Michelle. And last time I saw her, she hosted a really good event she has another event today, and I'm going to go across to see how well she does. I really hope that she's acting more like a business owner. I can already see some changes that Michelle's made. The signage behind me is great because it gives good direction to where her store is. I can't wait to see what else she's done. Michelle. Hi, Greg. How are you? Well, and yourself. So, Michelle, take me through your changes. Um, all right. As you came in, I'm sure you saw the sign outside that house. We've also changed this one to sort of go with that. If you look into the shop, the shelves are not there anymore, so it opens up the whole space. It just tidies everything up a little bit more. And then we put up this, so we'll put all our notices and things up just to sort of tidy everything up as well. So, I see. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> We put those rails up for the hangers and things to sort of help with the decluttering as well. And it makes everything look a little bit more It looks great, right, eh? Yeah, so now you just grab a hanger and go. <laughs> the big cabinet that was here, we moved to the back. We've got these boards as well, just so people also know that things are for sale. People come here knowing that they can have coffee, but they don't necessarily know they can have food. Mm -hmm. So now at least when they walk in, they can see, okay, well, we do have a menu. Well, let's have a walk around, because I okay. just want to have a look at the kitchen. Cool. All right, so this is our kitchen. Mm -hmm. Everything's sort of more streamlined is what we did is we put all the cooking things on one surface. Perfect. I bought a big shelf to put up here. Oh that's great. So, all so the everything yeah. So there's, yeah. A, there's actually a cycle here that you can Exactly. Follow. Like you'll go from the kitchen to prepping to cooking to washing. 
Greg is impressed by all the work that Michelle has done to declutter and re-image the store. New look, new feel, very upmarket, yeah. really good use of space. I really like the colours. Exactly. That's great. Well done. Thank you very much, Greg. Very I appreciate good. it. Greg sits Michelle down to discuss how things have gone since he last saw her. Michelle, I must say this place is looking beautiful. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's so open and these mirrors are beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know one of the tasks I said to you previously was yeah. to go back and really drill down into your numbers. Yeah. What was the learning that you took out of the exercise, specifically around your costings? Here's like for May, for example. What I did here is I highlighted some of the things that bring in a lot more money. So, so what were your big spenders here? So, so it's coffee, coffee, cappuccinos, no. lattes, hot chocolates, and this makes sense because it's winter. Mm -hmm. In summer, we do a lot more like ice coffees and things. In order for you to do something with this information, mm -hmm. what's the next step? I'm thinking that it can help me to sort of tweak my menu as well. So if I do see that certain things don't sell at all, there's no point in me having it because it's like stuck in hand that it's not making money. I can also use it as like a marketing tool, hopefully. If, if I do see that I've got things in stock that aren't selling so well, let's put it on a special to sell a little bit quicker. I think definitely <laughs> two good strategies there. Yeah. Take me through your goal. I wanted to grow and expand with regards to the coffee grocery still. That, that is still my long-term goal. I want to make sure that all the systems and everything is in place so that I can also be able to like, maybe have a little bit of time off and stuff like that. You've got to start looking at the culture here. Yeah. If you're not here, things have to run smoothly. I wasn't here on Saturday and it was absolute chaos. And I had so many complaints from customers. So what have you done about it? What can I really do? You know, I don't know what to do in a situation like that. You need to understand that there's a whole host of resources out there. Yeah. A whole group of people who have a fair amount of knowledge about how to manage people and manage yeah. teams. Yeah. From where I'm looking at at the moment, your team does need some training. And it may be something that you can look at in the short term. So when it comes down to a situation that you've got at the moment, it's about looking and saying, who can I call on? You aren't in this alone. How's your family been? They're awesome. Also in the community, you know. It just made me realize even more how blessed I am. I'm so grateful for all the people in my life and for you, Greg, because like, if you didn't come, I wouldn't have experienced it as much as I have. I'm so grateful. <laughs>a fitting example. She's getting what she deserves, and I think this is very fitting of who she is. Thank Keep you so up. much, Greg. <laughs> I would like to thank the business coach and Standard Bank for this opportunity. Now I am assured in where we're going and how we're going to get there. Michelle's come a long way in this process. She's worked really hard and she's passionate about what she does. If she keeps challenging herself and doing what she's doing at the moment, she's going to make this one of the best coffee shops around. Next time, the business coach travels to Cape Town to help another struggling business. I have absolutely no knowledge of how to run a business. I've never had a business plan. There's something dysfunctional there. Yeah. Yes. I think we've got to turn the whole place around.
The Business Coach, proudly brought to you by Standard Bank. Let's talk business. This is how we're moving your business forward. Standard Bank, moving forward.